everyone and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review. I'm Callie here with Michael and today we are taking a look at City Skylines the board game by Cosmos. So City Skylines is a game for one to four players ages 10 and up and takes about 40 to 70 minutes to play. In City Skylines you are cooperatively trying to build a successful city with happy citizens building out into an unknown area of land and ending up with a fully developed, hopefully functioning and happy city. So let's take a look at the game. So here we have the game City Skylines and it's set up to play up to four players. I mean, it doesn't really matter how many players you're playing the game, the setup is going to be the same. In this case, we chose a setup of three city tiles, A, F, and B. You can go ahead and choose your own setup or actually in the book here, it will tell you the different setups you can choose in the game if you would like to make it more interesting. It also comes with additional different tiles here that you can utilize and place how you want. It's also gonna come with three different decks. One one, two, and three. You're going to shuffle those up and then you're going to deal out a certain number of cards from the one deck to each player to begin the game. There's also going to be different types of, of these tiles, okay? So you're going to have these green ones, which are residential. You're going to have blue ones here, which I believe are commercial. And the last one here is yellow, and that one is... Industry. Industry. There's also some interesting little add-ons to the game, if you want to. We just simply added it all on as soon as we understood how to play the game, which are these guys here, which are unique buildings. It can be added like a stadium or something like a large hospital or helicopter area. And then we're going to have these spaces here, which provide things like electricity or water, et cetera, et cetera, Those which will all be found base. on here. Yeah. Yep. Uh, additionally, there's this board over here they're going to set up, and it's always going to start off with the electricity, water, and your garbage at zero. Your happiness will be at zero, the population will be at zero, and then your pollution, traffic, and crime will also be at zero. To start the game, you're going to get $12 redos. That's going to be what your like starting communal money is in yes. order to basically play cards from your hand. And then they also give you some player reference cards, how ending a milestone works, additional currency that you can utilize, the first player marker, which is a cute little cheap, cheap bird for the basis of City Skyline. That's actually mm -hmm. a little symbol of City Skyline. And this really big tower, which will demonstrate the amount of happiness you're gonna have totally throughout the entire game. And if you look at the back of the book here, it will tell you how successful you are based on how much happiness your city is. Or not successful. Or not successful <laughs> if you're us. Uh, but regardless, that's pretty much how you're gonna start. And every player is gonna get four cards in their hand. These cards could range from something like a firehouse to a commercial zone, residential zone, et cetera, et cetera. It might be five, actually. Might be five? But, yes. Okay, we well, we're just, we're just grabbing a certain amount of <laughs> number. grabbing but some cards to show You can off. look in the rule book for how that works. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, to begin the game, it's pretty simple. You wanna explain it to them? Yeah, so each the beginning player will get the first player marker and either choose from three different actions. Either play a card. Well, uh, before that, before we even do that, what are we doing? Well, we got to decide where we want to build our city. And it's going to cost to choose yes. which one of these we want. And we're going to probably choose something which, you know, sure, choose cost, A. So maybe. when we flip this, it's going to cost two. And we're, so this is the A one. We're going to flip it just like that. It should be exactly flipped to make sure that it lines as it was previously. So from our treasury here, we're going to pay two to the bank. And now this is the area that we're going to be building on with our cards, with these different buildings here. Yeah. Now we also additionally, there's a, a bunch of little mini expansions to the game you can add. Yes. Like if we wanted to, we could have these guys here. We could each get one and this will provide some kind of passive or active bonus throughout the game, but we're not gonna use these guys for now, but they do exist and they will be very helpful to you if you yes. want to use them. Yes. So in your hand, you're gonna have cards corresponding to the different buildings that are on, on the table there. So green ones for the residential, like we said, and so on, and the service buildings will be gray. And they're gonna give you certain benefits and certain negatives to the uh, to our city board here. So yeah, like I said, on your turn, you can either play a construction card. You can, if you just have nothing to play, exchange a card by putting it out on the field here to be picked up later and grabbing another And that will uh, cost you $2 you do that. It will also cost you $2, so very much a last resort or to end the milestone. What's unique in City Skylines is actually choose when as a group to go on to the next stage of the game or just when you run out of room and you can't build anything, you'll have to move on to the next stage of the game where you'll use your turn to actually pay the cost for an adjacent land area, flip it over, and keep tally building. Up, tally up the scores here, and we'll get into that a little bit later, and then continue on with your turns. 
So when you're building, when you're playing a card, um, and you're going to build, just choose say, one and play. Yeah. Uh, let's say I want to play this residential zone, and one of our we have different areas here. These are called districts. So I'm going to choose one of these residential uh, blocks, and you can choose any anyone one. you want. And, and there's multiple different types yes. too. They all have different sizes and shapes. And where you put it could be important later in the game or in the beginning. So we'll line it up with the city grid there. We're going to affect everything on this board. So we'll go minus one on electricity. We'll go plus one on population. And then this little symbol means if there was a firehouse adjacent right next to somehow our residential building, we would also gain the benefit of a plus one happiness. But since it's the first card, probably not the best first card to play, but we'll see later uh, how you can you can work with each other to combo these little uh, extra bonuses. So Very let's important. just go ahead and say we did that one. Okay, so so that one's played. That one's done, it just goes to the discard pile. And then after that, she's done. She's either chosen to discard a card, draw a new one and pay two, yep. or put it into the communal area and draw two and or draw one. And at the end, because I played a card, I'm also gonna draw a yeah. card. And then it would go to my turn, and I would choose one of these cards here, and maybe I'd want an elementary school, which would cost me $1. So I'd spend from our communal pool of, of that five there, I get four back, and then I would also get plus one happiness and an elementary school. Yep, and you have to find that one. It has a little book symbol here. And where do you want to put it? Mm, I don't know, wherever you want. Okay, we'll put it kind of in the middle here around some other stuff so we have room to build around it because maybe next I would want to play something like this industrial zone because after we get oh, plus all one of our, population, yeah, plus that's good one pollution, plus one traffic. Yep, and then if I place this one here next to our school, we will also get three dollars, which is great because we're gonna need we're gonna need money. <laughs> if you run out of money in this game at certain points, you yes. will lose the game. If you can't you afford to pay for this yes. or other things, you mm -hmm. will lose. So, for instance, if you can't afford to pay for your population during the milestone era, or if you can't afford to flip one of these places over, you can lose the game. So, money is very important. It's also a way in which you're gonna be playing cards from your hand. Yes. And basically, we're just going to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. We're just going to keep playing cards from our hand until the point where we can no longer place anything or choose not to place anything anymore. Once we can't choose, we can't place anything or choose not to, we will simply end the milestone. And when we do that, we'll take yeah. this card here. That's and what's cool. happens, I'll, I'll go and read it. We would go ahead and say, let's just go ahead and move this board to show you what it might look like at the end of a milestone. Uh, yeah. Sure. So. It says for each electricity, water, and garbage, you're going to move the happiness up or down one. So in this case, down three here, one, two, three, up three here, right back, and up four. Right, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and do the population. It's gonna cost us one money for each negative or positive population. So for instance, right now we have negative two, so it's gonna cost us two money. The farthest you are away from zero, that's how much money you pay. And then these aren't a worry until the end of the game. Uh, additionally, we're then going to make this happiness tracker go to zero and give whatever happiness we got to the main happiness track. So in this case, it's five happiness, which hopefully you'll get more. <laughs> and then after that, we're going to be able to use the next deck of cards, which would be set two. And we're going to be able to pick one of these guys here, basically one that's attached to this one here, yeah. flip it over and pay the cost, which would in this case be two more. And now we can continue building. Oh, I thought it was one. Yeah, one. Oh, it's one. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's a demo game. <laughs> and then we're going to continue building, though. And we're going to keep building with these pieces in mind. Mm -hmm. And we're not sure what's going to pop up on this next tile here. So it's really important yeah, as to how we, we want to build. Yeah, we There could be, usually there's two or three. There could be, even be four districts on each board. Wait, yep. the one might have five, right? Yep. Yeah. And that's, it. that's the basic idea of the game. We'll keep going throughout until all of the different milestones are gone through. And depending on the number of tiles here that we're going to flip over, we have the length of game works. Oh, and the districts are important because later, after you get past the stage one cards, stage two and stage three, the buildings no longer have to be 
exactly adjacent to the service buildings. They could just be in the same district. So they have, then they have access to that. Maybe because your roads are better thematically. Yeah. Or as you start building, you need to have things connected. And then as you continue throughout the game, you will have to just have things in the vicinity, which makes it a little easier to some extent, but also because there's so much on the board, yes. it makes it still, still quite challenging. And the districts feel small. <laughs> yep. Certain ones of these guys here will actually increase or decrease certain areas. Like, for instance, the if you build an electrical plant, you'll gain more electricity, which will give you happiness. Mm -hmm. And then things like police stations will reduce the and amount of crime in ones, the area as well. And those are the ones that cost the most money. They're expensive. And, uh, and the, yeah, the electricity and water, those are all called the utility buildings. Yep. Okay. And that's pretty much it. At the okay. end of the game, you'll do the same thing. You'll finish the milestone off. You'll gain as much happiness as you possibly can. And then the last thing is you're going to lose happiness based on the three things. Crime, uh, pollution, and mm -hmm. traffic, which will affect your end score, which will look in the book to see how well you did in the game City Skylines. Yep. It's pretty much the idea of the game. Let's go ahead and discuss what we think about it. Mm -hmm. So City Skylines, what did you think about this game? Now, first of all, this was in our top five video for the year, top five games of the year. Both of us actually had it in our top five games. So uh, this is probably going to get a pretty good review from us. You're supposed to keep that a secret and link to the video so they have to watch and see who really liked it. <laughs> well, you can figure out who liked it more, I suppose, if you really want. But City Skylines is an excellent game. This game is the best version of a city building game I have played to date. I think it is your favorite puzzle game at the moment, right? Yeah, it probably would be, but that's because <laughs> I don't have to do the puzzle aspect of the game. I can simply play the strategy aspect of the game, which is playing the cards in combination with the other cards to make sure that the city is built correctly without having to actually put the pieces down onto the board to make sure everything fits perfectly. What we actually end up doing is she will put all the pieces down on the board and I will simply just be playing the cards so I don't have to bother with the, the crazy puzzle aspect of the game. I, I like both aspects of, that, of the game, the strategy of who's going to play what card to kind of combo off of each other and do we have enough to do that can we uh do that and also the actually putting the pieces together and visually trying to figure out how to puzzle it so that you have the best possibility later of actually fitting things there that you want to combo if you are building this city you are feeling you are definitely feeling the expanse of the growing city that you're building and mm -hmm. as the milestones go you'll start seeing your work be put into happiness and it's kind of a nice feeling every time you see things work out correctly however the game is actually extremely challenging there is a lot yeah. of things that you'll want to do that you will not be able to do unless you do something at a cost. So if you wanted this and that, it might cost you more pollution than you'd like or crime, which might facilitate you uh, in certain ways, but also hinder you in other ways because you won't be able to build certain cards in certain areas. There's a lot of these larger buildings with these all the expansions. These are really difficult to actually play and plan so that you have room for them to play them later. Yeah, they're very, they're, really they're, 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 they're but... basically free to play, but they require a lot of space on the board and they also occupy yeah. weird areas on the board as well, which means you're not going to get everything you want. So it'll be like, oh, whenever you build a residential next to this area here, it's going to give you some kind of bonus. But now there's not as many residentials you can build next to it because of how weird and wonky the shape is. I'd say in general, at the very beginning, don't get discouraged with the game. We failed miserably at first, but it is a game where you kind of learn how it works as you play and how you want to build your strategy. Building a more. city is hard. It is. <laughs> this game, a good lesson for this game is what teaches you that building a city is <laughs> actually very challenging and keeping that, people happy is and, very challenging and balance <laughs> balance is important yeah. if you don't have balance you're going to fail this game and uh, it's it's interesting because it, it looks very light and shiny and easy to, to you know to grasp as you're playing and things are going well and all of a sudden resources get get really low money gets yeah. really really don't low get the service buildings that you need <laughs> yeah there is a amount of luck in this game too you yeah, are drawing yeah. cards from decks and sometimes you'll get cards you want other times you won't and you'll be able to choose between any of the three decks as you progress so at the very end of the game you can choose to go for, to deck one if you need more money or something like that because you decks need, two and three will be more, more costly yeah and they're simpler the cards in the first deck are simpler the other ones are more complicated and can give you greater rewards but Provide, need greater resources in order to do that. The quality of the game is excellent. Yes. It's very, very well put together. The artwork, 
beautiful. I guess yeah, his artwork is really nice. It reminds me literally of the old Super Nintendo game for Sim City, in which you are literally building a city, looking down as though a, you're like a, it's like a godlike feel because you're looking down and the city is just coming to life as you're putting together and the end result to this game is really really nice it feels good to see what your city looks like and how well you have done with your city it, it makes a great picture that's different at the end of every game of how you built your city and you really feel like at least i did feel like i created this or you know together with other people maybe created this this city i just played the cards <laughs> i mean overall it's still a fun game this is a game that would be really well in a solo player game as well if you don't mind the large play area this will work really well for a solo player game um or just of course picking up the game city skylines on switch <laughs> which is Sweetie. what I bought for her because she liked this game so much. But cooperatively, this is a lot of fun. Uh, I strongly recommend it. Uh, overall? Overall, yes, great. Has everything I love. Puzzle, combo building, cooperative, where you're actually communicating and working together, trying different strategies, not just the same old, uh, not just one best strategy that wins the game. So overall, as you can see on our top five video for 2019, top game on my list. It's, it's a very good game, even for a puzzle game. <laughs> because, <laughs> no, nah, I'm just not very good at puzzle yeah. games. But this one is just, it's very different, very unique. And it has a lot of the old, it has a lot of the retro like style gaming aspects I like from the old Nintendo games and whatnot, SimCity, that kind of world building. And then the cooperative nature of the game is nice as well. It's, it's not really, it's, the game is being competitive with you and you are working together with your friends. And it doesn't feel... And if, you want, if, if you want, if you want even extra challenge too, you can choose to make sure that nobody. We can't talk as we play the cards, so you don't want somebody to feel like they're an alpha gamer. Like you do this and you do this and you do this. No one can speak, and you just play cards. And you try and combo it with the other players based on what they're doing and how they're placing cards down. Mm -hmm. If you want, I mean, the game's already challenging as it is. Yeah. But if you run into one of those players, <laughs> that might be something you can do with the game. This overall excellent quality, excellent artwork, looks great, feels great. It's fun. At the end of the game, you feel like you've accomplished something. I really, really enjoyed City Skylines. I suggest you take a look at it down below. Link yeah. in the description. Pick up City Skylines today by what is it? This is Cosmos, right? Yeah. Yes. Cosmos. Yeah. And please, please leave us a like if you like this video, uh, if you like our, this as well, so hit subscribe, you can check out some other ones by us, and uh, we're just sharing our love for board games and everything about them. We play a lot of games, so it's a lot of fun to share about them. Thank right, guys. you. Thanks so much. And as always, we look forward to seeing See you guys next time! time.